that is so satisfying, I can't even start. What you've got here is the complete hardware of Spotikatch. And that is super exciting because uh, we've been working on this for quite some time now. And in this video, I wanted to show you the inside, the electronics, um, the interface. And I've got some questions that any of you who want to contribute to this uh, design and functionality uh, can help out with and give your suggestions. But first, here's a little recap because this is the seventh episode of this weekly series and I'm really enjoying it, although I'm really sick in the last uh, one and a half weeks, you can probably hear this. Um, you can skip, of course, uh, ahead if you're not new here, but if you're new here, here's a little recap. Synthio X Academy, my name is Rui, and Spotikatch is a dual looper powerhouse of uh, sound design and hands-on performance that we're working on. Uh, a few weeks ago, I started this vlog to share the development process and the challenges, breakthroughs, and everything in between. Spotikatch is the brainchild of the brilliant Vlad Litvinenko. A couple of years ago, he came up with this idea of a slicer that has a built-in Euclidean sequencer I loved the idea at the beginning, it looked like this, then I joined and it started looking more like this, and then like this, and then something like this, and now it's looking like lots of tape pieces connected all together, making funny faces to you. This is a big one. I'm building the first unit to see if it actually works. No simulations, no renders, just real hardware in my hands. Before we dive in, huge thanks to everyone who is supporting us constantly. Developing these instruments require investments. This in particular one, just the components and the development paying for electronics engineering and um, development is around 50,000 euros. And it's only possible because of you guys. If you want to take a more active part in this journey, check out the links below for our instruments core community and Discord, which is free, so no excuses. Transition. Nick Donaldson of Infrasonic Audio, who you probably know because of the DSP wizardry behind Audrey 2, is also a damn good electronics engineer, apparently. Since our last financial boost came from Audrey sales, thanks again to you people, we gave Nick the commission to design the electronics of Spotikatch. He's already tested power, audio and noise and because he's a perfectionist he found a few small tweaks for the power circuit which will allow us to run this device on almost anything that sends 5 volts through USB. Which is crazy considering this is sending Eurorack level signals. My job today is to check that it powers up to build a first unit that I can actually play here that's probably going to go to Vlad and most importantly getting feedback from you. See the interface is still evolving and I'd love to hear your thoughts. This is the stage where your feedback can actually shape the final design. Let's test this. Once everything is soldered, we slap the DAISY DFM and the LED goggles, faceplate connected with a JST cable, and we can flash the bootloader and run the test firmware Nick developed for us. And if it all goes well, these LEDs should confirm everything is functioning. Let's see the pots, switches, touchpads, and step by step, this project is coming to life. Nick absolutely nailed the electronics on this and this unit is solid. Of course, we are going to have another iteration in a couple of weeks because perfectionist engineers can't resist making things better. But honestly, for a first prototype, this is insanely good. I'm now going to send this unit to Vlad for firmware development and I can't wait to start playing this thing. Let's talk functionality and interface. Just right off the bat, to avoid any confusion, any knob that I'm going to turn is going to light this ring in the center up. This is because this is only a test uh, firmware, so uh, yeah, just bear this in mind. We have Pair Deck Sound on Sound, which is this knob right here. 
we have loop uh, position and size. We have a switch between them that allows you to send CV signals from anywhere to control this. Um, if it's switched up, then it's going to control only the position, and if it's switched down, it's going to control only size, or if it's in the center, it's going to control both, which I think can create really interesting uh, combinations. By the way, these cables are going to come with the unit, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, so we have a sound on sound, then we have position and size, and a switch between. Then we have an envelope, and we can control the shape of the envelope right here. We also have CV over the envelope. And then we have the pitch or speed with volt per octave in. We have a switch here to determine how this deck is going to behave because these are two separate decks. Um, one can behave as a looper while the other one is a slicer. So this is loop, slice and delay. So you have three options. And then we have a record gate and gate out. That's um, for each deck. In the center here, what you see is uh, an envelope follower of deck B and an envelope follower of deck A. Or it can also be with a switch changed to simple and hold and square or sine wave and saw wave. So. These are basically modulators, and we have a glow knob here, which is um, like an attenuator, and we have the cycle. And this is a design decision that I made to make the knob of the attenuator the big one. I know that conventionally, most of the time, the cycle, or the, the speed, the frequency, would be the, the large knob. But I find it a bit odd because normally you would actually define the cycle and then mess around with this to uh, Like this is going to be the thing you're actually performing with the attenuation, but maybe you're wrong I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people disagree with this. So like yeah, leave me a comment with your argument Why these should be flipped and I'm definitely going to consider it so this is modulation B and this is modulation A and we can define how this modulation is going to behave right here. Right above modulation we have the main control over the input and output and clock. So there's a clock tap right here and there are going to be uh, some um, baffles to control how much the light is going to bleed to other sections. This actually is supposed to only light this up. So we'll have some sort of uh, 3D printed thing inside. Um, but yeah, we have a clock in right here. And then we have input and output for the left, input and output for the right. And then we have attenuation um, or amplification to be honest, is better to say. Uh, amplification, and in the center it's going to be line level, but then you can push it further to Euro rack level, which is really useful. So you can really define how much is this going to be, um, like depending on what you're going to feed in. This is the, the kind of thing that I call set and forget kind of functionality. You set it once and you forget it for the session you're performing. Um, while these are much more hands-on, playing around, switching and seeing what happens and discovering all sorts of happy accidents. Now, let's talk about the Spotikach fader, because I, I love this. Spotikach is actually named after a home-brewed Ukrainian alcoholic drink. It's strong, unpredictable, and when made right, it will send you stumbling. The word spatikach comes from the Ukrainian verb, and I'm going to butcher this now, so sorry about this. Um, spotikatsia, spotikatsia, which means to stumble. And I think it's really fitting because the higher you push this fader, the more generative, the more character spotikach is going to have over your audio. It's basically a reworking your audio. It's going to play it in reverse, uh, take all sorts of pieces that you recorded earlier and bring them up again, 
um, yeah, it's basically just going to be a little bit drunk, which I think is just a fantastic analogy for something that's supposed to be uh, predictable on one hand, but like very generative and explorative on the other. And you have CV control over this and a fader, which I think is fantastic. We also have touchpads and you can see these so these touchpads are basically controlling whether you like we're going to use them in different ways um, but here's one idea we're going to have this scent um, temporarily while touching so let's say that you're now playing and this could be um, I don't know let's say that we have here the envelope like that right so Let's say that the envelope of deck A is going to be controlled now by the envelope follower of this. So as this goes up, this is going to change the envelope shape, right? Now, what happens when you touch this and this together, or this and this, or this and this? Basically, you are sending this temporarily to this spot. So while this is a permanent connection between the two this one is a temporary connection that's one idea that we have another thing is we have here uh, a shift control and shift plus play is going to be recording so shift play and you're going to see this buffer filling up like this and then when you stop it's going to play this so the LED is going to indicate where you are like based on this yeah it's a bit hard to explain this is not where I'm going to dive into this detail but just think about it like you have shift and you can shift and play you can also you have for each of these decks you have two um, two touchpads here and two touchpads here so this is the play this is a mod or reverse and it could be different things um, and then here in the center you have shift and alt and alt is uh, both of these are alt so depending on where you are you'll be able to uh, touch this or this and they're basically the same touchpad so that's alt and that's shift uh, play and mod these are drift and orbit and orbit and drift are going to be the sequencing companions of the deck that means that you'll be able to define whether it's going to be playing on 2, 4, 8, 3, 16, somewhere here. And this is going to uh, break down um, in Euclidean algorithms how it behaves. It's still work in progress, but that's, that's the idea. Like, the percussive rhythmic part of the deck is controlled right here with these touchpads. And of course you have all sorts of shift combos that could be really interesting here. There's also the effects. So there is another thing that we're looking into of how you would, for example, send something temporarily into a lush reverb. And this could be done with like shift controls, right? Like I could say that as long as I'm holding a play, and any of these touchpads, it's going to send it to a certain effect. This could be really easily done. Like I could say, okay, hold this and this, and that's going to be reverb. And that's also going to be maybe delay or flanger or whatever. Um, as long as you're holding one and the other, and it's going to depend on what you touched first and what you touched second. Again, this is like where user experience is, um, like this is the heart of user experience. This can get really exciting and super fun to play, like think Mortal Kombat or uh, Street Fighter where you would press a few buttons but you actually know what you're doing, it's not too complicated. Or it can get really cumbersome and not fun, it's just like, oh I don't know what is happening. I think that a company that is doing this really well is Teenage Engineering. With the pocket operators, you basically just like hold and press and then you get to some sort of an effect. You don't necessarily need to know all the effects by, by heart, but it's a small unit and it's actually fairly easy to memorize. So that's the inspiration for the effects part here. Last, and definitely not least, but really interesting, is this switch right here that's going to allow you to define the behavior of the two decks. So deck one is going, deck one and deck two are going together into a single 
uh, mono channel. Deck one and deck two are going into um, a stereo spread, or deck one and two are going to be mingled together in interesting ways. That's that. And I think this is pretty much everything for now. I'm curious what you guys think about this. I really appreciate any of your feedback. Please write in the comments below, share with your synth nerd friends as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join us on Discord if you haven't already. I'll see you there.